Ian McKellen's agent con man meets and befriends Helen Mearing via an online dating app. However, this isn't a simple case of modern age love. There's way more afoot in The Good Liar. It's a good old fashioned tense thriller filled with twists, turns, surprises and revelations. The Good Liar kept me hooked and engaged for the entirety of its runtime. Towards the end of the film, some of these twists get a little exposition heavy in scenes where characters literally sit down and explain everything. The delivery isn't always all that well crafted, but the content that's being dished out is juicy and engaging nonetheless. In order for each twist to outdo the last, they constantly get darker and more twisted throughout the film, perhaps to the film's detriment. What is initially thought to be a somewhat light-hearted thriller eventually becomes really dark and serious and one could argue that it goes a bit too far. Nothing is simple in The Good Liar, for better and for worse. Luckily, to counteract the more serious, darker elements that underlie the film, there are some great comedic beats throughout. Ian McKellen's lead con man is a charming, charismatic individual despite the evil, nasty traits hidden beneath the surface. His performance in the film is simply brilliant. There are scenes in which he makes you laugh one minute and then sit back in trepidation the next. Some scenes show him seamlessly slipping in and out of his conman character like the flick of a switch. It's damn impressive and great to watch. Sadly, co-star Helen Mirren isn't given quite as much to do until late in the film. Prior to the final act, she spends most of the film as a love interest or a single, lonely, elderly woman. It's still well acted on her part, but there's nothing all that fascinating about her character until later on. Thanks to some great direction and editing, the film moves along at a brisk pace and it never seems to meander or stay on something too long. Everything feels necessary, adding to the greater mysteries and intrigues in the film. The one area of the film which does falter a bit is in the use of flashbacks. These flashbacks aren't bad, but they are somewhat intrusive, distracting away from the central storyline at moments of high tension. Had these flashbacks been trimmed down and presented in shorter and more condensed formats, they may have worked better. The Good Liar is a highly enjoyable, thrilling film that had me engaged from the get-go. Ian McKellen is brilliant as the likeable yet evil con man at the heart of the film, and with plenty of twists and surprises, the film is one I recommend. I'm going to go into a couple of little spoilers now, so if you haven't seen The Good Liar yet, go and see it and then come back and watch the rest of this. Before going anywhere though, give me a follow on Twitter and Instagram at the underscore Grant Burton, and most importantly, subscribe to my channel. Now though, it's time to go into spoilers. At the end of the movie, it's revealed that after suffering a violent beating, Ian McKellen has had a debilitating stroke. Whether he deserved it or not is a discussion for another time, but I don't think the film needed this scene. Yes, it's nice to see what happened to his character, but sometimes it's better to leave things up for interpretation or to our imagination. Had the film ended with his beating, I think the ending would have been a tad more satisfying. The final twist, concerning the backstory of Helen Mirren's character, works really well and it turns things around rather nicely. However, it also felt like one twist too many. It lacked the big surprise element because we had already seen several throughout the film, and I'm not entirely sure if I liked the revelations of her backstory. It ended up coming across as rather convenient and not entirely believable. Finally, the initial relationship between Helen and Ian's characters felt a little on the rush side in my opinion. In retrospect, it makes sense because they're both trying to reach a certain goal in their long con, but without knowing the final twist, it did have me scratching my head, wondering why Helen's character was so welcoming to Ian's and why they were in a rush to move in together. It just didn't feel natural, especially when neither character is portrayed as being all that stupid. Well, that's my review of The Good Liar. I liked it quite a bit and I recommend it.